What's up, YouTube? Ryan here. Welcome back to 1517 Films, where in every episode I'm always contending for the faith once for all delivered to the saints. And today, being that it's going to be the 4th of July, we're talking about the issue of America, Jesus. <laughs> Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to 1517 Films. If this is your first time, welcome. Uh, I don't know how you found me. It's a YouTube algorithm mystery, but you're here now, so sit back, relax, enjoy the conversation. If it's your first time, you always can like a video if you like it. You can subscribe to the channel. You're gonna hit that notification bell, although I am working on a schedule, so I'm less sporadic. Gonna shoot for Mondays and Wednesdays. We'll see how long it takes to get there. So definitely do that. Leave a comment below. I love those. I've been getting a lot of comments lately. They're exciting. They're engaging. I'm learning a lot about you that watch the channel. And you guys, uh, you're, you're my entertainment. I love talking to you. So always leave a comment in the comment section below. Uh, I love talking with you guys. It's awesome. Now, let's get to the issue at hand. It's going to be the 4th of July. So that means in the United States and mainline American Protestantism, and sadly in many Lutheran churches. We are going to celebrate, if we haven't already this past Sunday, America Jesus. And what do I mean by that? Not the Jesus of the Bible, not the unique Son of God, eternally, eternally begotten of the Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, who by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, and all of that. No, we're talking about America Jesus. We're talking about Jesus that is one of two things, either Republican, Jesus is a mega hat wearing Republican, Republican, and this is a Christian nation, and we need to have that American flag up front. We need to sing us the Star Spangled Banner, and God help you, son, if we don't sing the Battle Hymn of the Republic. Don't you just that song. That's America Jesus. Then there's social justice warrior Jesus. That's also celebrated by many Christians on the left or leftists who are not Christians, but for some reason think that it matters in a secular world who Jesus is. This is the Jesus that is not going to condemn sin. This is the Jesus that died as an example of love. This is the Jesus who's full of good ideas. This is the warm, fuzzy, my best friend Jesus, and you Christians don't understand him even though you've been studying him for 2,000 years. Longer than that because Christians and theologians have been studying the pre-incarnate Christ since he was first announced in the Garden of Gethsemane as the seed of the woman who would crush the head of the serpent. Jesus goes all the way back to Genesis. Now this Jesus is the one that we should be worshiping at church. So in order to talk about the problem of turning uh, the second or third Sunday in Trinity uh, of the Trinity season into America Jesus Sunday, or at my church it was uh, Ministry to the Armed Forces Sunday, we need to talk a little bit about the separation of church and state. Or, more, more rightly put in theological terms, the two kingdom, the kingdom of the right and the kingdom of the left, the kingdom of grace and the kingdom of government, the kingdom of forgiveness, life, and salvation, and the kingdom of, in America, life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. These are two separate kingdoms and they need to remain separate. Now, on a secular level, I suppose some people think that means, keep your rosaries off my ovaries. Well, now hold on a minute. We're still allowed to vote in America according to the dictates of our conscience, but the state should remain out of the church. And that's not just me talking to government officials and political affiliates and all of that saying, stay the heck out of the church. That's me talking to pastors. That's me saying that you are called to preach Christ crucified. That's me saying you, pastors, have an obligation, a call from God, a vocation that you've been giving. You've been placed into an office where you are to proclaim repentance and the forgiveness of sins in the name of Jesus Christ. That's what you're supposed to be doing. So when we confuse the kingdom of grace and the kingdom of government and, and blend them together on Sunday, it's very confusing. And this is a big problem in mainline American Protestantism. So uh, a la Romans 13, we have a kingdom of the government uh, and the government has been established by God. It's been given its authority by God to punish wrongdoers. It does not bear the sword in vain. Uh, we should obey the civil authorities because they have been commissioned by God to rule and govern us. Why? Because we're fallen sinful people and left to our own devices, we're going to become anarchists. So we need 
government to rein in our sinful nature and to keep us living civilly and peacefully with each other. And in America, in the constitutional republic that is America, we citizens, we have a voice. We get to elect these officials. We have the freedom to vote. We have freedom of speech, freedom of press, freedom of religion. We have uh, the right to keep and bear arms. We have all of these rights seemingly granted to us by God. And insofar as that, I suppose, granted to us in that God has uh, given these leaders the position that they have to govern over us. We could have a conversation about whether or not the revolution was sinful because it was not obeying the civil authorities. Any historian will tell you that the con the congregating of the founding fathers uh, in this Congress where they drew up these documents that founded our country, that was illegal. It was against the law. They were disobeying the government. That's a sin. We're supposed to obey the government. And the 4th of July is a wonderful holiday. Don't get me wrong. I am a U.S. Iraq war veteran. I volunteered and served two tours in Iraq. I love my country. I bleed red, white, and blue, just like everyone else in this country. I love my country, the flag that covered my heart underneath my body armor. Every mission that I went on flies every day in the free American breeze. I love my country. I love being patriotic. And I am so looking forward to the traditions that I personally have regarding the 4th of July. Watching Revolutionary War documentaries, reading the Declaration of Independence on the 4th of July, taking my children to the park, watching the fireworks, having a couple beers when I get home, lighting my own. I love celebrating the independence of the United States of America. It's okay to be patriotic. It's not okay to think that the kingdom of grace <laughs> is the same thing as the kingdom of the government. You see, the role of the government is to govern and to make laws to keep us safe and to protect us and to protect and preserve our rights in the United States of America. I wish I could say the same for other governments in other countries, but that's kind of what makes America the greatest nation on earth. In the kingdom of grace, it's not a constitutional republic. It's a royal divine monarchy. Christ is king. We are servants of the Most High God. We are also children of the Most High God, adopted into his family by his son. We have been declared redeemed and righteous, not because of anything that we've earned or any worthiness or merit in us, but because of Christ's sacrificial atonement on the cross for our sins, the sacrificing of his body and blood for ours. We are declared righteous, holy, innocent, blameless. And in this kingdom, forgiveness, life, and salvation are to be proclaimed. And they should not be confused with life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness in the kingdom of the government. These things should not be confused with each other. And when we blur those lines in the divine service on Sunday by singing the Star Spangled Banner and the Battle Hymn of the Republic and God Bless Our Native Land, some of these are really good songs. But when we make the service about that, we're not making it about Christ and him crucified. And that's the only thing that we are to know amongst the people is Jesus Christ and him crucified. Jesus said that forgiveness and repentance, repentance and the forgiveness of sins would be proclaimed in his name. Jesus also said in John chapter 18 to Pontius Pilate, my kingdom is not of this world. So we should not think of Christian, Christianity and patriotism as a theocracy. America is not a theocracy. It is not governed by Christ. Well, I mean, all things are under his authority, but Christ is the king of the whole of creation and he has established a system of government, systems of government to rule us on earth. However, in his kingdom, which is not of this world, he is the king. He is the divine monarch. He is the ruler. All things are subject to him and all things have been created by him. It is important for us Christians to understand that there's a difference between the kingdom of grace and the kingdom of government. And there is a separation, even in the Bible, of church and state. And we need to keep these things separate. Can we talk about moral issues in church? Sure, we can. If we're teaching on the commandment, thou shalt not murder in church, guess what? That is an opportunity to talk about the moral evil of abortion. If we're talking about thou shalt not commit adultery in church, guess what? We can talk about homosexuality is sex with someone to whom you are not married and therefore 
regardless of any genders involved, is adultery. We can talk about these things, but ultimately, at the end of the day, the gospel prevails and we talk about how Jesus was crucified, dead, buried, risen from the dead, ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father for you, and that there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Forgiveness, life, and salvation. There's this thing that exists in the church and has for a long time. It's called the lectionary. It's a a system of readings and prayers and a suggestion of hymns to take you through the church year. So in either a one-year lectionary or a three-year lectionary, you, dear Christian, are being taught the full counsel of God's word. And this also protects us from the whims and passions of the pastor. Because if you go into any mainline American Protestant church, you're going to see pastors that get up on their pedestals and talk about their pet projects or whatever vision it is that they've been casting. The lectionary is a good gift of God that protects us from that. Stick to the lectionary. This past Sunday was the third Sunday after Trinity Sunday. Or the third, third Sunday after Pentecost. And there are assigned readings for that. We should be taught the full counsel of God. We should be reading from the Old Testament, from the epistles, and from the gospel. And we should be being preached Christ crucified for us and in our place every single Sunday. If you're going to a church where they're making it about something other than Jesus dying and rising for you, you need to look your pastor in the eye and say, we would see Christ. Woo, I'm getting a phone call. Hold on. What is that? Oh, ha 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 Edit. All right. Now, uh, <laughs> that was crazy. Uh, I do have a suggestion for you guys. So this Murica Jesus that I've been talking about, this is a false Christ. This is an idol that we build up in our own hearts that Jesus is a MAGA hat wearing Republican. Or Jesus is the ultimate sub, uh, social justice warrior. He is none of those things. He is the unique son of God. He's not affiliated with a political party. He is the divine king, a good king, the good shepherd. He is not going to be like King George and usurp his authority over us and tax us into revolt. He's not a bad king. He's a good king. Or as uh, C.S. Lewis says of Aslan, the type of Christ in in, uh, Chronicles of Narnia, he's a good lion. It's not tame. He's a good lion. So I have a recommendation for you. Uh, I want you to read uh, this book by Matthew, Pastor Matthew Richard called uh, Will the Real Jesus Please Stand Up? This is an incredible resource and talks about the idols that we build in our own heart regarding who Jesus is. Murica Jesus, while not listed uh, specifically in this book, what does he call him in this book? He calls him ah, the National Patriot, Jesus the National Patriot. So we've got some false Christs, we've got the mascot, the option among many, the good teacher, the therapist, the giver of bling, the national patriot, the social justice warrior, the moral example, the new Moses, the mystical friend, the feminized, and the teddy bear. These are all false Christs that we build up in our mind when we take our focus off who he's declared to be in God's word and place onto him who we want him to be. And this is the time of year when we want him to be Merca Jesus, where we think we can't be patriotic and love our country unless we love it as a Christian theocracy. And that's not the case. Now, in the church, it is a theocracy. It is a royal divine monarchy. Christ is king. The United States is a constitutional republic. And we need to keep it that way. So, dear Christians, happy Independence Day. Happy 4th of July. Uh, God bless the USA truly because it is the greatest nation on the earth. We have our sins. And we also have the right as Americans and citizens of this great country to voice our opinion on those and change the political leaders around us to, to serve the people. We the people. That is what makes America great. But it's okay to be patriotic and it's okay to be a Christian, but it's not okay to think if you're not patriotic, you're not a Christian. And it's not okay to turn what ought to be a service of God's gifts to us in word and sacrament, which proclaims Christ and him crucified. It is not okay to turn that into a celebration of independence. 
Sure, we can talk about the sacrifices that service members make. I've made, I've, I've written down that I would make that sacrifice myself. I signed a check to my country up to and including the cost of my life. And by God's divine grace and mercy, I did not have to cash that check. But some men do. And it's okay, I suppose, to talk about the sacrifice that men make for the freedoms of other people. And we can, But as long as the central focus is the sacrifice, the one God-man made for all of mankind, Jesus Christ and him crucified ought be the center of every single service on Sunday. There's no such thing as America Jesus. There's no such thing as Jesus, the ultimate social justice warrior. Christians, we need to demand that when we are in church on Sunday, we are citizens of the kingdom of grace and celebrate forgiveness, life, and salvation. Sunday morning with, with the brethren, with the ecclesia, with the church, is not a time to make it about being citizens of our government and citizens of life, liberty, and pursuit of happiness. Sunday needs to be uh, properly discerned as a separate right-hand kingdom thing. It is the kingdom of grace. It is much better this way. It is much better when we keep church and state separate, both on a secular level and on a theological level. So if you want to learn a little bit more about it, there's always Romans 13 and there's always John chapter 18. If you have any other questions, I'm always in my comment section. I love talking to you guys. There, happy 4th of July. And until next time, may God richly bless you in the grace and mercy won for you by Jesus' vicarious death on the cross for all of your sins.